everybody? Good oh, that's very quiet in church. How noisy are we feeling at home? Let's try this again, shall we? Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. It's nearly Christmas. How exciting is that? As we count down our Advent and open our Advent doors and light our Advent candles and get our houses ready and our homes ready for Christmas, we think about and get ready and prepare our hearts to worship Jesus and celebrate his birthday. Today, we are thinking about uh, the story of John the Baptist and all that he did in helping us to learn about the love of God and the love of Jesus coming to be with us. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to light our Advent candles and Maya's going to come and read and... Have you got any helpers with you to come and light the candles? Are you coming to help, boys? Come on, then. So we're going to light our Advent candles. I'm going to step out the way. This way, like that. You go round that way. Go round that way, man. There we go. One, two, three. Three candles because it's the third Sunday in Advent. Thank you very much. So we're going to say a special prayer for our third Sunday in Advent. Lord Jesus, light of the world, John told the people to prepare for you were very near. As Christmas grows closer day by day, Help us to be ready to welcome you now. Amen. Should we say a big amen? Ready? One, two, three. Amen. Brilliant. Well done. So as we're thinking about Christmas, let's see. Will has put up on, the, on Facebook a poll to see who's put their Christmas decorations up. So let's see if anybody out there in the whole wide world that's watching has put their decorations up. Have they, Will? Yeah. They have. Or how many? 83% of people have put them up. Oh, look, it looks like somebody might be doing it today. I have you put yours up? Oh, wow. Who else has put theirs up at home? Now, have we all got our Christmas decorations up, do we think? Yes. No, have you put yours up? Yes. Girls, have you got yours? You've got yours up? Who's got, who's got lights outside their house? Has anybody got lights outside their house? We have. <laughs> They've got amazing lights. <laughs> Excellent. Now, so my next question is, is who is getting very excited about Christmas? 
Are we getting excited about Christmas? Yes. Does anybody know how many sleeps it is till Christmas? I wonder if anybody knows out there. Twelve. Twelve? Twelve sleeps until Christmas. That's very exciting, isn't it? And do you know what? When we're celebrating Christmas, it helps us to remember Jesus' love for all of us and for all the world. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to do some activities in church and we're going to do some singing and some listening to the Bible if we are at home. So let's, as we worship God kind of together and apart, we thank God. So let's pray together. Father God, thank you for each other. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you, whether we're at home or at work or in church. And we pray that as we worship you now, this morning, you will be with us and help us to learn more about you. Amen. Amen. Right then. So, let's see.
Today's reading is taken from John chapter 1, starting at verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. <clears throat> now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptise if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptise with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptising. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and to provide those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly for the Lord. My soul rejoices for my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the young plant come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make the righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. How can the birth of one child be a cause of hope to every person living in Nottingham and in villages and towns across this diocese, especially against the backdrop of this past year with all the challenges that we've been living through. We all need hope. Hope in our NHS, hope for patients, hope for children and young people in our schools, hope for students, hope for those struggling to keep their businesses going, hope for those without jobs, hope for the homeless, hope for the elderly, hope in our care homes. Jesus came to be the light of the world and the hope of every nation. There have been plenty of suggestions about cancelling 2020 and maybe there are a fair few who would like to skip Christmas this year. But we need Christmas because we need hope. This is no time to retreat. We need to charge the darkness with the light of Christ. And the good news is that Jesus didn't only come for religious people. He was born for everyone, a saviour for the whole world, which means there is no street we have ever walked down and no home that we have ever passed where his light and his hope cannot reach. It's why we sing those words from the carol, yet 
In the dark streets shineth the everlasting life. There is no life, however frail, and no heart, however broken, that God's light cannot touch and transform. This is why the birth of Jesus is such a shining hope for our world on its knees in the middle of a pandemic, with all its terrible consequences and complications. We don't need to pretend that life is fine or even be confident that next year will surely be better. All we need to know is that God is with us, with us in the messiness of life, in the struggles and in the stresses and in the loneliest moments. And he understands the darkness more than we could ever imagine. From the manger all the way to the cross, Jesus is dispelling the darkness, including the darkness that hides within us and sometimes seems to overwhelm us. He brings the light of forgiveness and new life, which is not just for now, but forever. This is truly wonderful. So let's celebrate Christmas 2020 like never before. We'll need to do things differently this year to stay safe and look after others. But we can put Jesus right back in the centre of our celebrations and let his light shine in the darkness. Churches across the city and around the county will continue to do what they've been doing all year. To care for others with acts of kindness and generosity. There will also be Christmas carols and readings online and hopefully in person too. But there is something we can all join with. Each time we turn on our own Christmas lights, whatever form they take, we can say a prayer for those that we know and those in need. To pray for our neighbours, to pray for our loved ones near and far away, to pray for our world. Lord, let your everlasting light shine in the darkness. You may even like to join in by sharing a short video, turning on your own Christmas lights, and why not share it on social media? Whatever this Christmas holds for you and for our world, may God bless you. Because of Jesus, there is always hope. God's light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out.
let us pray. Lord, your church is so full of possibility and yet so vulnerable. It is so urgently needed by our world and yet often so weak. Strengthen each member of the body and increase our sense of expectation so that we live life with your life. Lord, in our constantly changing world with its shifting values and fragile ecological balance, root us deeply in your unchanging nature of mercy, goodness, faithfulness and love. Lord, we welcome you into our homes, our streets and our communities. Where we are blind to your presence, give us sight. In the ordinary and the remarkable, help us to recognise our true and living God. Lord, all the needs of your children are known to you. With God-given love, we bring to mind those who are suffering physically, spiritually and emotionally that they may find you there beside them in these dark and painful times. We pray for everyone who is sick. We pray for everyone worried at this time. We know that as Christmas, appro as, as Christmas approaches, it will be a sad time for many. People will not be able to spend time with all of their family because of the virus. And for many, it will be the first Christmas without loved ones who were lost to the virus. Heavenly Father, give your people peace. Lord, to whom eternity is natural, help us to realise that time is not the whole story and welcome into your kingdom those who have lived this life in your company and have now passed through death. Comfort those of us here whose hearts are heavy with grieving. In this season of Advent, Inspire us to be people of hope. Encourage us not to be greedy for mater material possessions, but for justice and truth. And flame us with a love for others, which crosses boundaries of race, religion and nationality. Stir within us a desire to fight for the integrity of creation and appreciate the immense beauty of the earth. Be with us, Lord, at this time, that we may be a people of hope. God of mercy, help us to listen to your voice, a voice that speaks of peace to all people. Let the sound resonate within us until a whisper becomes a shout which cannot be ignored. Move us with your love so that our actions echo your peace and we may bring tidings of comfort and joy to those touched by conflict. Fill us with your hope, O Lord, and quiet the fear and hatred which divides us as we seek to build a future together of true and lasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we pray the collect for today. God for whom we watch and wait. You sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of the right. With Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. They are yours now and forever. Amen.
right turn. Okay, um, so I've got some questions for you, and then we're going to pray for you. So, do you believe that God has called you to serve as church warden of your parish? Excellent. Did you hear that? No, nobody heard you. Say it a bit louder. Convince them. I do. I do. Does that work? Yes. Okay. Will you trust in God for strength to fulfil the task to which he has called you? I do. I do. I do. Good. I will I do. So do it. Will, because it should be will, because you say, I say will, but anyway. Will you give yourself in love to serve the people of your parish, the members of your congregation, and the bishop of our diocese? I will. Excellent. So this is the official bit. This is the legal bit. The church wardens, when admitted, are officers of the bishop. They shall discharge such duties as are by law and custom assigned to them. They shall be foremost in present, representing the laity and in cooperating with the incumbent. They shall use their best endeavours by example and precept to encourage the parishioners in the practice of true religion and to promote unity and peace among them. They shall also maintain order and decency in the church and churchyard, especially during the time of divine service. In the church wardens is vested the property in the plate, ornaments, and other movable goods of all the church, and they shall keep an inventory thereof, which they shall revise from time to time as occasion may require. On going out of office, they shall duly deliver to their successors any goods of the church remaining in their hands, together with the said inventory, which shall be checked by their successors. Okay, that's the legal bit done. Who wants that job? Church wardens, I therefore ask you to make your declaration before God and his church. I'll give you a sentence and you can repeat it after me. I solemnly and sincerely declare before God. I solemnly declare. I solemnly and sincerely declare before God and his people. And his people. That I will faithfully. And diligently. Discharge the duties of the office. Of church warden for the parish for which I have been chosen during the period of my appointment. There we go. So I pray, may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith that you may be rooted and grounded in love and bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So in accordance with canon law and the amendments that have been made and the declarations that you have made, I now admit each of you to the office of church warden for your parish and its people. May God bless you in your work for him. People of the parish, that's you. Will you support your church wardens, pray for and care for them in their ministry, and as you enable, as they enable you in yours? We will. Marvellous. So, God of power, through your spirit, you promote peace and reconciliation, partnership and encouragement. In our work together, may the boldness of your spirit transform us, the gentleness of your spirit lead us. The gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. So, people of St. Wolfrips, here are your church wardens. What an exciting job! Thank you. Welcome them with joy and treat them with love and respect. You can clap now. to see what's happening this week. It's so exciting, isn't it? There's all sorts of things going on. So this week, there's things that are happening and that you can see on your tellies or whatever you happen to watch, Facebook or YouTube, on are these. So on next Sunday, we've got our nine o'clock morning service as normal in church. And then um, at 10.30, there is the St. Wilfrid's Nativity Socially Distanced Thing Extravaganza Thing 
that we have put together. So, um, so don't forget to tune in to Facebook or on YouTube at half past ten next Sunday morning to, as we tell the story of uh, Christmas from with everybody. Well, lots, lots, and lots of people involved. And um, yes, it, well, it will work. It will be fine. It's fine. Um, so that's at half past ten, and then at six o'clock next Sunday evening is again on uh, YouTube or on Facebook. Or if you want to get a DVD, you can get a DVD of this one. Um, it's our carol service, so we will be singing carols and having readings. And again, that's going to be online because it's way too complicated to do it in church because we can't sing anymore. So that's next Sunday, and then. Christmas, if you want to come to church on Christmas, either Christmas Eve at midnight at half past 11 for the midnight service, or on Christmas Day at half past 10 for our all-age celebration, then uh, make sure you let me know, because we're, we're booking um, slots in for that. So let me know if you want to come to either of those two things. So we get, as we celebrate Christmas together and at home, uh, we, it's great because we can worship God and celebrate this Christmas. So we're going to pray our final prayer and then we're going to sing our song, Joy to the World. So let's pray our final prayer. Hopefully it's on the screen. Excellent. So, with love and compassion, come Lord Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come Lord Jesus. In power and glory, come Lord Jesus. In wisdom and truth, come, Lord Jesus. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. So have a very lovely week, everybody. And may God bless you this week as we get ready for Christmas. And we're going to sing Joy to the World. <laughs>